Shisha is a city in Azerbaijan, in the Karabakh. Situated at an altitude of 1,400 to 1,800 meters in the Karabakh Mountains, the city was a mountain resort in the Soviet era. Most sources date Shusha's establishment to the 1750s by Panna Ali Khan, founder of the Karabakh Khanate, coinciding with the foundation of the fortress of Shusha. From the mid-18th century to 1822, Shusha was the capital of the Karabakh Khanate. The town became one of the cultural centers of the South Caucasus after the Russian conquest of the Caucasus region from Kaja Iran in the first half of the 19th century. Over the course of the 19th century, the town grew in size to become a city, and was home to many Azerbaijani intellectuals, poets, writers, and musicians, including Azerbaijani ashiks, mukham singers, and kobas players. The town has religious, cultural, and strategic importance. Shusha is often considered the cradle of Azerbaijan's music and poetry, and one of the leading centers of the Azerbaijani culture. Throughout modern history, the city fostered Azerbaijani population. The first available demographic information about the city in 1823 suggests the city had an Azerbaijani majority. The city has suffered significant destruction and depopulation during the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. After the capture of Shusha in 1992 by Armenian forces during First Nagorno-Karabakh War, the city's Azerbaijani population fled and most of the city was destroyed. Between May 1992 and November 2020, Shusha was under the de facto control of the Republic of Armenia and administered as the center of its Shusha province. On 8 November, 2020, Azerbaijani forces retook the city during the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh or following a three-day long battle. The Azerbaijani government opened the city to tourists from Azerbaijan in 2022 and plans to start resettling the city in 2023. Several historians believe Shusha derives from the new Persian Shah, glass, vessel, bottle, flask. According to the Oxford Concise Dictionary of World Place Names, when Iranian ruler Aga Mohammad Khan Kaja approached the town with his army, he reportedly told the ruler of Karabakh Ibrahim Khalil Khan. Panna Habad, city of Panna, Shusha's previous name, was a tribute to Panna Ali Khan, the first ruler of the Karabakh Khanate. Some sources, including Mirza Jamal Javanshir, Mirza Adagozal Bey, Abbas Gilu Bakakhanov and Mirza Yusuf, attest to the foundation of the town in 1750-1752. According to other sources, 1756 to 1757 by Panna Ali Khan, 1748 to 1763, the founder and the first ruler of the Karabakh Khanate, 1748 to 1822, which comprised both lowland and highland Karabakh. The mid 18th century foundation is supported by the second edition of the Encyclopedia of Islam and the Brockhaus and Efren Encyclopedic Dictionary. According to Mazza Jamal Javanshi, the author of the Persian language text History of Karabakh, one of the most significant chronicles on the history of Karabakh in 18th to 19th centuries, the Karabakh nobility assembled to discuss the danger of invasion from Iran and told Panna Ali Khan, we must build among the impassable mountains such an inviolable and inaccessible fort, so that no strong enemy could take it. Thus, Panna Habad Shusha was founded. According to Mirza Jamal Javanshi, before Panna Ali Khan constructed the fortress there were no buildings there and it was used as cropland and pasture by the people of the nearby village. Panna Khan resettled to Shusha the population of Shabulag and some nearby villages and built strong fortifications. Although Panna Ali Khan had been in conflict with Nader Shah, the new ruler of Persia, Adil Shah, issued a firman decree, recognizing Panna Ali as the Khan of Karabakh. Less than a year after Shusha was founded, the Karabakh Khanate was attacked by Mohammad Hassan Khan Kaja, one of the major claimants to the Iranian throne. During the Safavid Empire Karabakh was for almost two centuries ruled by Ziyadoglu family of the clan of Qajars, of Turkic origin, and therefore, Mohammad Hassan Khan considered Karabakh his hereditary estate. Mohammad Hassan Khan besieged Shusha, Panahabad at that time but soon had to retreat because of the attack on his territory by his major opponent, Karim Khan Zand. 
his retreat was so hasty that he even left his cannons under the walls of Shusha fortress. Panna Ali Khan counterattacked the retreating troops of Mohammed Hassan Khan and even briefly took Ardabil across the Aras River. In 1756, or 1759, Shusha and the Karabakh Khanate underwent a new attack from Fath Ali Khan Offshore, ruler of Ermia. With his 30,000-strong army, Fath Ali Khan also managed to gain support from the of Drabid and Gulistan, however. The siege of Shusha lasted for six months and Fath Ali Khan eventually had to retreat. When Karim Khan Zan took control of much of Iran, he forced Panna Ali Khan to come to Shiraz, capital of Zandruld Iran, where he died as a hostage. Panna Ali Khan's son Ibrahim Khalil Khan was sent back to Karabakh as governor. Under him, the Karabakh Khanate became one of the strongest state formations and Shusha grew. According to travelers who visited Shusha at the end of 18th early 19th centuries the town had about 2,000 houses, and approximately 10,000 population. In summer 1795, Shusha was subjected to a major attack by Aga Mohammed Khan Kaja, son of Mohammed Hassan Khan who had attacked Shusha in 1752. Aga Mohammed Khan Kaja's goal was to end with the feudal fragmentation and to restore the old Safavid state in Iran. By early 1795, he had already secured mainland Iran, and was directly afterwards poised to bring the entire Caucasus region back within the Iranian domains. For this purpose he also wanted to proclaim himself Shah of Iran. However, according to the Safavid tradition, the Shah had to take control over the whole of South Caucasus and Dagestan before his coronation, citation needed, therefore, the Karabakh Khanate and its fortified capital Shusha were the first and major obstacle to achieve these ends. Aga Mohammed Khan Kaja besieged Shusha with the center part of a 70,000-strong army, after having crossed the Aras River. The right and left wings were sent to resubjugate Shervan Dagestan and Erevan respectively. Aga Mohammed Khan himself led the center part of the main army, besieging Shusha between 8 July and 9 August 1795, 65, Ibrahim Khalil Khan mobilized the population for a long-term defense. The number of militia in Shusha reached 15,000. Women fought together with men. The population of Karabakh also actively participated in this struggle against the Iranians and fought side by side, jointly organizing ambushes in the mountains and forests. The siege lasted for 33 days. Ibrahim Khalil Khan eventually surrendered to Mohammed Khan after negotiations, including the paying of regular tribute and to surrender hostages, although the Kaja forces were still denied entrance to Shusha. In 1797, Aga Mohammed Shah Kaja, having successfully resubjugated the wider Caucasus and having declared himself Shah, decided to carry out a second attack on Karabakh. Trying to avenge his previous humiliating defeat, Aga Mohammed Shah devastated the surrounding villages near Shusha. The population had not recovered from the previous 1795 attack and also suffered from a serious drought, which lasted for three years. The artillery of the attackers also inflicted serious losses on the city defenders. Thus, in 1797 Aga Mohammed Shah succeeded in seizing Shusha and Ibrahim Khalil Khan had to flee to Dagestan. However, several days after the seizure of Shusha, Aga Mohammed Khan was killed in mysterious circumstances by his bodyguards in the town. Ibrahim Khalil Khan returned to Shusha and ordered that the Shah's body be honorably buried until further instructions from the nephew and heir of Aga Mohammed Shah, Baba Khan, who soon assumed the title of Fath Ali Shah. Ibrahim Khan, in order to maintain peaceful relations with Tehran and retain his position as the Khan of Karabakh, gave his daughter Aga Begum, known as Agabaji, as one of the wives of the new Shah. From the early 19th century, Russian ambitions in the Caucasus to increase its territories at the expense of neighboring Kaja Iran and Ottoman Turkey began to rise. Following the annexation of Georgia in 1801, some of the Khanates agreed to become Russian protectorates in the immediate years afterwards, citation needed. In 1804, the Russian general Pavel Tsitsianov directly invaded Kaja Iran, initiating the Russo-Persian War of 1804-1813. Amidst the war, in 1805, an agreement was made between the Karabakh Khanate and the Russian Empire on the transfer of the Karabakh Khanate to Russia during the war, but was not fully realized, 
as both parties were still at war and the Russians were unable to consolidate any effective control over Karabakh. The Russian Empire consolidated its power in the Karabakh Khanate following the Treaty of Gilistan in 1813, when Iran was forced to recognize the Karabakh Khanate, along most of the other Khanates they possessed in the Caucasus, as belonging to Russia, comprising present-day Dagestan and most of the modern-day Republic of Azerbaijan, while officially ceding Georgia as well thus irrevocably losing the greater part of its Caucasian territories. Absolute consolidation of Russian power over Karabakh and the recently conquered parts of the Caucasus from Iran were confirmed with the outcome of the Russo-Persian War of 1826-1828 and the ensuing Treaty of Turkmenche of 1828. During the Russo-Persian War of 1826-1828, the citadel at Shusha held out for several months and never fell. After this Shusha ceased to be a capital of a Khanate, which was dissolved in 1822, and instead became an administrative capital first of the Karabakh province, and then of the Shusha Uyazd of the Elizabeth Paul Governorate. Shusha grew and developed, with successive waves of migrants moving to the city, particularly Armenians, who formed a demographic majority in the surrounding highlands, 72, 15, 73. Beginning from the 1830s the town was divided into two parts, Turkic-speaking Azerbaijanis lived in the eastern lower quarters, while Armenian Christians settled in the relatively new western upper quarters of the town. The Muslim part of the town was divided into 17 quarters. Each quarter had its own mosque, 